My first memory of giving money to help somebody else dates back to my early teens when I was at secondary school. One of the boys in my year was a victim of polio and had severe physical problems. Something went wrong in his family setup and the boy ended up living with his grandparents. We all knew that money was very tight as the boy never had any pocket money to spend. Just like it is in 2021, there were items regarded as essential kit for teenagers. Must-have items in 1964 included a portable radio. The boy was no different from most other teenagers in that he loved pop music. He had been off school for weeks because he had developed another severe illness and to this day I don't know what it was. Unknown to the boy, one of his close friends had taken it upon himself to arrange a collection to buy him a radio to cheer him up. Word spread around the school and soon many of the pupils had donated some of their pocket money. Unfortunately, the boy who arranged the collection had omitted to tell anybody in authority and soon the headmaster found out about it. He was a bit of a tyrant and we all thought that that was it. But the headmaster surprised us all by donating money, as did most of the teachers. It only took three days to collect enough money to buy a more expensive portable radio with a reel-to-reel tape recorder on top of it. To minimise the chance that his grandparents' pride might prevent them from accepting the gift, the headmaster took it upon himself to deliver the radio personally. He explained that it was the pupils and not the staff who had organised, collected and bought the radio. The boys and girls only had a few pennies pocket money, but they were willing to give some of it up to help their friend. It wasn't charity, it was self-denial and collective acts of generosity. The headmaster's actions did have a spin-off benefit as some of the pupils warmed to him but most of us realised that he was still a tyrant. There's a story about self-denial in the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. Let me read it out to you. And he, that is Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which made a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. In Palestine at the time of Jesus, most towns and cities had churches called synagogues. The main church was located in Jerusalem and was called a temple. Structurally, the temple was much bigger than the synagogues. The Jewish people regarded the temple in Jerusalem as the holiest place in the land. Women were not permitted to enter the holiest part of the temple where the altar was located. The closest they could get to it was a large courtyard called the Court of Women. In Jesus' time, the temple did not use plates or bags to collect people's offerings. People visiting the temple had to put their money into one of the 13 containers in the treasury located beside the court of women. The containers were narrow at the top and wide at the bottom, shaped like a trumpet. Coins thrown in would make a noise as they rolled around inside the container. The heavier the coin, the more valuable it was. Heavier coins also made more noise as they were dropped into the container. The noise betrayed to the discerning ears how much the person had put in. The money offered was used for the maintenance of the temple and also for its ministry. Mark chapter 12 tells us that Jesus knew that almost all the people he saw dropping money into the containers were only donating what they had left over after attending to to their own requirements. But there was a poor widow woman who gave all that she had. 
The story teaches us that it is less important to God how much we donate to help others. That it's more important that we give as much as we can, cheerily and not grudgingly. Even if we do not have very much, we should share some of it with those who have less than we do. Even although giving to others might make our piggy banks a little bit lighter, it makes us shine for God. Please keep in mind the story during the coming weeks of self-denial and beyond. The money that we save by making sacrifices from the 7th of February until the 7th of March will be put to the best possible use. It will all go to supporting the Salvation Army's mission and ministry amongst people in foreign lands who are not as fortunate as we are. As we make our sacrifices, we should also remember the sacrifice Jesus made when he came to earth to help us, to reach out to us, to save us and to die for us. Thank you for listening to me this morning. Thank you.